Okay, uh, before we start on this next thing, something else that I learned tonight, because I don't do this at home, and I've never done this before, but this is a great working spot right here with the paper. And something I realized tonight was you can work on this part, work on that part, and flip it over, and you still got some more working places. So I just looked at this tonight. I was going to bring my little tray and forgot it, and I looked down, and I went, oh, this will work out just fine. I've used paper before, but I never thought to do it like this. So something else to save you a little bit of money. And this was a free paper, so that's even better. It's the Yachtville Sun. It is good for something. Okay, what, uh, what we're going to go into, you'll see the next thing there says wash your hands. Um, and you can see already my hands are dirty. I'm not going to wash them, but I'll be very careful. Don't eat potato chips. Don't eat Cheetos. Don't eat fried foods before you do this. And if you do, wash your hands. Make sure you get them nice and dry. I don't wear gloves when I do this because I... It makes my hand, I can't really get a good feel for what I'm doing, especially with this. Um, so yeah, wash your hands. Now we're, I'm going to show you how to remove numbers. Uh, this is a, formerly a ER products, but uh, X-Actrail bought their dies and came back out with them. Actually put a nice frame on the bottom of them. Um, so I'm going to remove the numbers on this on one side with Solvacet and on the other side with the Fast Orange. So what I want to do right now, and don't use this brush when you do it. I'm going to use this little brush right here. And what I'm going to actually do is use this brush right here. Now notice how gently I use the knife. Because you don't want to spill this where you don't want it spilled. So using a really small blade here, or brush here is the best way to do this. So, and my eyesight's gotten worse as I've gotten older, so I have to get up close and, and don't try to do all the numbers at once. Um, I just do two or three numbers at a time. And when I change the numbers on a car, like somebody has, this one's 539 and I want 552. I don't do just the three nine. I do all six or seven numbers, whatever it is, because the the decals never match the rest of the numbers. I don't worry too much about the difference between the reporting marks and the numbers, because they're that's not quite as noticeable. They're usually a different size anyway, like they are on the SP car. Uh, but with just the numbers, I change them all. Okay, okay get in there. And this is old Salva set, so hopefully it's still good. Um, and I use Solvacet because that's what I heard about. They haven't said that Microsol, which is from uh, Microscale, will do it. If, if you guys know if that will work or not, let me know. They're two different brands. And I noticed that Solvacet, it kind of worked. It's a little bit stronger, I think. And if you use Solvacet on Microscale decals, um, it really screws them up. If, if you, you won't have time to adjust them. Uh, you go to adjust them, and you're going to have to get another. Ah. Okay, so I'm just going to move three numbers on this for right now. I'll do three numbers with the solve set, and I'll do three with the um, orange. So like I say, just, just gently write on the numbers that you want. I'm going to let that sit. It's been sitting for a few minutes, so I'm going to grab my 2,000 grit sandpaper, cut, tear off just a little piece like that, get a nice sharp point like that, and gently, ever so gently, take that off, get yourself a Q-tip. Now what happens sometimes is you'll get what we call ghosting, where you'll see where the number has been. You're not going to notice that when you put the other numbers on top. Where it, you may notice it is if you renumbered a locomotive, uh, like an SP locomotive that had the white numbers and then that gray underneath. You might see a little ghosting, but um, I've seen that on the real thing. They put the wrong number on the locomotive when they did it. They took the old number off. Um, so I mean, unless a prototype police are there, you don't need to worry about it. 
in the prototype police, they don't have badges, so don't worry about it. They don't have any stinking badges. All right. And again, the Q-tip comes in real handy right here. It will take a little bit of the paint off underneath. So when you're done doing this, getting all your numbers off, you need to go back and, and gloss coat the car again because you're going to be putting new uh, decals on. Um, of course, you want a glossy surface for decals because it's smoother. And if you do it on a flat surface, you're going to get a lot of air bubbles and that sort of thing in there. And then you'll have that silvery look underneath it and such. Okay. All right. And I'll let you guys pass that around, take a look at that. Different manufacturers are going to have different, um, different results, but they will come up. Except for one brand, and that is Accurail. You cannot change a number on an Accurail car. I don't know why. It's the way they do their paint. Um, and this is what happens with Accurail cars. If you, I tried it with, with the, the Citrus. I tried it with Solvacet. I tried with just, uh, just sanding them off very gently. And their pad printing process, I don't know how they do it, but it's like it takes everything off but the number. So, and the problem, and I love Accurail cars. They're easy to put together. They're you know, pretty good. They're, I like them. Uh, they only come in one number. So, uh, yeah. Now, they do make decal sets with four numbers. Accurail does. You can buy the decal sets. And I bought a set, and they, they match really well to the car. Now, which is fine, except you're still going to have a little bit of a ridge, no matter how thin that decal is, of where the decal is. And you can't really cut around the numbers because you're going to have the numbers that you're covering over underneath it. Um, I tried painting over. You can't match the paint. If you look at the paint on those, they're already real flat. And they've got a, kind of a rough texture to them. And it's just the way they paint them. I don't know how, how it is. Uh, they do a nice job. It's just that's your number. Now, this stuff. Where's my toothpicks? Now, I use toothpicks for this because it gums up the paintbrushes. So, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is flatten it out. Okay, get a nice flat one like that. And again, we're going to put it right on here. Now, with with the This orange oxide stuff, or whatever they call it, fast orange, you've got to let it sit on there for a little bit. And that's why it's really important not to get it smeared everywhere, because this stuff takes off just about all the paint that it's touching. So I kind of went off colored outside the lines here. Um, and just let it sit on there for like three or four minutes. It's got to sit there, and it's got to work into that uh, number on it. Oh. Well, I, I'm a stockholder, so. <laughs> and with this, you can actually um, take take your toothpick. And once this is done getting in there, you can actually use the toothpick very gently and see that it might come off. This isn't even ready to come off yet. So you can see the solvent set might work a little bit quicker. Um, I tried the orange. Like I say, different manufacturers have different paint processes. And some, the orange works better than the Solvacet does. Um, I think on Athern locomotives, I've used the orange. It seems to work a little bit better. Uh, but again, it's however you, you know, you're going to have to practice. Um, and again, like I say, this, is, this does take a little bit longer. Yeah, it still hasn't started working yet. Sometimes I help it out with this, but we're going to let it sit there for a few more minutes. And then if you just can't get the number right, you can always patch it. And I took, I 
have a picture of uh, this particular car that looked like this. It was uh, S Seattle North Coast, and then it had been a BN car, a Burlington Northern, and then uh, Lamoille Valley Railway Corporation, where they bought it from them. So it actually had three patches on it. So um, that's one way of getting around it. <coughs> and hopefully this is coming off. And knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have done this with this car, but since I'm doing it for you guys. But um, this is going to be one of those, you're going to have to trust me on this. I can't get that stuff to come off. Yeah, that's the one thing the, with the uh, orange hand cleaner, it does take a little bit longer. Uh, but like I say, on some things it works really good. Now, if you look at what it, how it kind of came out, you can see that it now looks like it's weathered. Uh, when you're done, of course, you want to gloss coat the entire car, not just that one area. You want to get everything the same color. Put your numbers on and let it dry. And... Uh, and then go ahead and, and do your decaling. I'm not going to talk about decaling. You guys are pretty familiar th with that, I hope. If you're going to put new numbers on, of course, cut as close to the number as you can. Don't cut a big square around it, or you're going to see where that square is. And as we get older, it's a little tougher to cut around those little numbers. Uh, I don't think you need to worry about it on the, the end reporting marks, but yeah, at the side of the car, you probably want to make sure you get those good. <coughs> 